Hello, and welcome to Let's Make a Top-Down Shooter. This video is about connecting the enhanced input and gameplay ability systems. First thing we're going to do is add a few actions. If you remember from the verse video, this matches the enum. So there's four abilities for the character and two more for weapons. For each of those actions, we will have a function that's called and then a utility function to connect the enhanced input um, action value with the gameplay ability system. First, we need to include the enum. And then in setup player input component, we need to bind each of those actions to the function. So that's all it's doing here is it's taking the action variable that we just created, binding the triggered event uh, to the function. The functions themselves will simply be calling the send ability local input utility function. It's sending along the value and it's also sending along the ability ID. So the way this will work is that in the editor, we will set up a keybind for the primary ability. When that keybind is pressed or released, that will result in this function being called and sending along the value with inside this is a true or, true or false. And in this case, it's sending along the primary ability uh, input ID. And every other input action will just send along its appropriate ability input ID. The, uh, the utility function here is just making sure that the ability system component is valid. And then we're checking the input action values value, whether it's going to be true or false. If it's true, ability local input pressed is forwarded to the ability system component, sending along the input ID. Otherwise, the released version is sent. So with that all set up, we can compile. And of course, there will be no errors. The input files are in the third person input and actions folders. The actions are the input actions themselves. The default will look like this jump here, which is simply it's a bool type and it has triggers for press and release. So I can either just duplicate that or if you right click, go to input, input action. Call the first one IA primary ability. So the default was bool, but it didn't actually have the uh, the two triggers. So we're going to add both pressed and released. For how we want to set up our gameplay abilities, we need both pressed and released. Otherwise, it uh, kind of messes things up. Now I'll just duplicate this And once all the input actions are ready, then we go to the input mapping context. Inside here, we can expand the mappings. Now, we're not using look anymore, so I'm just going to remove that. We add our new mapping. And as you can see, that's grayed out. You can only add one mapping at a time. It's a little bit of a pain. But we're going to start with our primary. 
primary is then the input list here. You can find what you need or just click this and hit the appropriate key. We're going to use Q and E for the abilities. We need to include both pressed and release triggers here. And then we need to do the same thing for each of the others. So secondary ability, set that to E, add pressed and released. I close it and it just reopens it. Movement, I'm just going to hit space. Utility, I'll just use F. Weapon fire, I will use the left mouse button. And weapon alt, I'll use right mouse button. And ideally for all of those, you would also set gamepad values. So for each of those abilities, there's four, so you can just set those as the uh, A, B, X, and Y, and then set your weapon fire and all to uh, triggers or buttons. that set, the last step is to also, in the third person character, set up the actions. I also forgot to move the look action, remove the look action. And with that set up, I'm going to create a example ability and create a new folder for gas. It's gameplay ability system. Make subfolder for abilities. And to create one, it is just a blueprint with a parent of our TDS gameplay ability. Call this test ability. First, you need to set the ability input ID. I'll just set it to primary. And then, when activated, I can still use the get avatar actor from actor info. We'll cast this to our BP third person character. And when that is successful, I'll just throw out a print. And always need to call end ability. If you don't call end ability, then your abilities will just stop working. It'll work the first time, and then if you hit the uh, the input again, it just it does nothing. Now I need to give this to the character, and for now I'm just going to do that in 
third person. So I'm going to use the utility function get ability system component. This has the same name, but this is not the same function that we added to our class uh, that the interface uses. Um, this is kind of a global utility function that checks to see if the actor sent to it has that interface and then it calls that function. So effectively, you know, the end result is the same, but level of indirection. We're going to use this to give ability. We set this to the test ability. Now, even though we set up the gameplay test ability, or gameplay ability test ability to set an input ID, that input ID is meant to be used in the code when the ability is given through C++. When you're using like give ability directly here, uh, it's it has no way to know about that variable, so this part here is still valid. So for that, we're going to use ability input ID, which we'll is use literal enum, and then we can set it here to primary ability. Make that an integer. And now when I hit the Q button, the primary ability, it's calling the print function as expected. Thanks for watching. If you liked the video and you would like to see more, you know what to do. And if you would like to support this channel or just want to download the project files, you can do so through the Patreon link below.